everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to offer you insight and information about your board games. Now normally at this time of the month we would be doing, well I would be doing, a monthly roundup. But because it's the end of the year, it seems like it's an appropriate time to take a look back over our gaming habits for the year. This is my husband Brian. Hello, I'm Brian. Yeah, Brian is like the secret half of Board Game Inquisition because he plays all of the games with me and reads pretty much all of the rule books. And the power behind the throne. Yeah, pretty power much. behind the rule book in this case. <laughs> so it seems really, really fair that I should have Brian here with me today while we talked about some of our favourite games for the year. Now, most people do top 10 lists. We love top 10 lists, right? Yeah. Yeah, we watch a lot of top 10 lists. Go with the Dice Tower. But you know what? I can't put things in numerical order. I think it's difficult. Could, could you have made like a top 10 list of your Easily. favorite games? Easily? Yeah. Okay, I couldn't have done that. So instead we're doing what has now become the second annual Golden Board Game Awards. Um, and we would like to have called it the Golden Cleric Awards, but not enough people have watched Father Ted. So this is also the time of year where I encourage you to go and watch Father Ted, um, a pretty hilarious Irish TV show. Um, where they give in a Golden Cleric Award. So um, so instead we're having the Golden Board Game Awards and we have a bunch of categories. Um, and we think they're kind of fun and interesting. Yeah, sure. yeah I, think it was, I think it was a nice way to look at the games throughout the year where they're going, oh, this is definitively the best game and this is the worst game we ever played and you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, but before we jump right into this, um, there's something I think we should do, which is actually take stock of our entire year, right? So people at this time of year who log their board game plays yeah. um, will be able to tell you, oh, I played X number of games this year. So if you were curious, here is our stats. Yeah. And I will invent a drum roll for this because now, I, I, now, now I'm better at video editing. I can make real <laughs> drum rolls. Can you put drumsticks in my hand as well? No, I'm not oh. that fancy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the past 365 days, we still have one day left this year, we could get some more games to play today. Um, we have played um, a board game 445 times. Is, is that an interesting number? Is there anything statistically relevant about this? About 1.2, 1.3 a day. 1.3 board day. games a day. That sounds incredible. That's a board game a day and uh, two board games every five days. So <laughs> That's a lot of board games. Eight, eight board games a week. That's, I'm really surprised by this. Um, obviously I checked this before now because I thought it would be entertaining to share with you. I was really surprised that we played that many games. Like, I know we play games a lot. We don't really do other things, right? We, 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 but, um, we yeah. We play. You, a little you log bit. our role playing sessions in there? No, I did not log our role playing sessions because they're not on Board Game Geek. But like, as I said, um, definitely board gaming is our main hobby, but I was still surprised by that number. It was a pretty big number. Um, this is where it gets interesting. The number of unique games we've played. A lot, because I've read a lot of rule books this year. Yeah, this is in fact the indicator of just how many rule books Brian has read, and this would be um, 189 unique games. Um, now, we worked very hard twice to clear off our shelf of shame this year. Yeah. We did a really big push around your birthday, and we did a really big push before around Christmas there. Mm. Um, and the only thing left on our shelves right now is how many Stefan Fell games? Three. Three Stefan Fell games, so we, you know, so we're, we're feeling pretty and good about it. Oh, sorry, yes, the Funkover strategy game. It was really, really cheap, we couldn't say no. Oh, it's... and that free game we got in Essen. That's true, we also have a copy of Grifter's Nexus we've not played yet, because it was given to us for free at the, the Stronghold Games booth, or the Indie Car Boards and Cards. Cards and boards, boards and cards. Yeah, so you can see we've we've played a lot of unique games this year. Another, um, I, I was surprised it was also this big. Were you surprised? No, I read no. a lot of rule books. It's true, you did read a lot of rule books. I am writing rule books and you want some advice, send, send it on to me. <laughs> exactly how to write a rule book that I can read. <laughs> Uh, well, well, we all know rule books are important. Everybody wants a good rule book. Um, so the number of unique games we played was that many, but how many of them were new games? Uh, I'd say 250. Oh, come on. Yeah. We did not play that many. 159 new games. That's still absurd. Yeah. It's still absurd. But I'm really proud of us. We, we played a lot of new stuff. We've tested a lot of things. Yeah. We've tried all sorts of stuff out. This has been the year for like getting through the collection, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of proud of us. We didn't do terribly, terribly. Um, if you also keep track of your stats, let's share them below. I'd, I'd love to hear about them. And also, of course, as always, when I do these kind of... I want to call it a quiz show, but it's not really. Um, I want to hear your answers to the same questions we asked um, and see, you know, what games really stood out for you this year. So shall we roll on to the very yeah. first category? Uh, are the links to all the games that we mentioned going to be no. in the comments below? No, no, you'll know where to find them. I will, however, bring up the lovely bar thing I made, the graphic for the bottom of the, the screen. So somewhere across here, no. you will see, you know, uh, the name of the game, the publisher and things like that. Excellent. Okay, so do you want to start us in with the first category? Okay. Best game components. This is the 
game that has the greatest components when you look at it, the, the look, not just the look, but the field components. Yes. And how they interact with the game is how I treated this. Yes. Now, how did you treat this? I try treated this as this wasn't about how great the game itself was, but how nicely put together it was, or how you know nice the pieces were, or kind of how much thought went into them sometimes too. Yeah. Uh, which is true. So I'm gonna start with my nominee. Which was? Uh, so my nominee for best game components, and I might be a little biased, um, but this is Everdell from Starling Games. Um, yet again, I'm going to highlight, I've got the collector's edition version, so I think it is super fancy. And it seems being a bit picky, but regardless, I think even if you don't have the super fancy version, there's something very cool about how Everdell is put together. All the thought that went into all of the pieces, and it's the only game I've ever seen with a three-dimensional three I, <laughs> I had the same problem to say it when I was making the review for this was the three dimensional tree three tree there we go tree tree trees small wood <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think there's something very special about how that game's been put together even the fact the board is circular with space for your own cards and things like that I think the components are really really top notch so it really stood out for me as a very very lovely game this year so what about you? my nominee Zia Legends of a Drift System Woo! This has 18 hand, well, they're not hand painted. Are, are you sure? They're painted miniatures. Are you sure there's some small children Lovely in China? Lovely game mats them. where you have your ship layout and you have the cube, as opposed to just normal cubes, you have these lovely cubes that are a little bit translucent for the components. Mm -hmm. I just love the way it looks on the table. Mm, Zia is a very pretty game indeed, yeah. isn't it? And definitely Zia stands out among space games because most space games are just a bunch of hexes and some kind of star themed thing um, with a bunch of cubes. Um, Zia really takes it up a, yeah. another notch. Isn't it interesting that these are Kickstarter games? Oh yeah, is Zia a Kickstarter game? It, was, it is a Kickstarter game. It is a Kickstarter game. Yeah, we didn't game. get from Kickstarter, of course but it is not. a Kickstarter We didn't get everything else from Kickstarter either, but sure enough. It is um, a Kickstarter It is a Kickstarter game. Yeah, that is interesting. So do you guys think that, you know, Kickstarter components are just that much better than regular games? Have what? you had anything else that stood out this year that wasn't from Kickstarter? Nemesis is also Kickstarter. Oh yeah, Nemesis. That's true. Yeah. Few of them. Okay. So maybe it is just the fancy games are coming through Kickstarter. Um, I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Do you think that the games that are just being released normally just don't have this? Well, you, you have know, to sell it components? up front. Yeah. So you can't just go, here's some pieces of wood, have a nice box. Mm -hmm. You have to go, look what's inside the box. Look at these cool miniatures. It is true. It's very true. So who did we decide the winner was? And we had a big argument over this, guys. This was a very difficult, the difficult decision remember. to come to. I already know, so it's fine. So the winner um, for the best component is Everdell. I think it really does stand out. Like, I get... I get Zia is better in terms of space games, but in general, I think you could have done more actually with Zia to make it even fancier, but it might have might have ruined the game a bit. But yeah, there's also expensive also, enough as it is. Also, Everdell's got all those very cute wooden meeples, and they're all completely unique and different. It, it ties in. It's I think okay. it deserves. Okay, I like wooden meeples. I can like wooden meeples. They're rather rather yeah. cute. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, this question probably should have come first um, because last year we had the most outstanding Gloomhaven in a Gloomhaven award. And of course, the winner was Gloomhaven. Really? Yeah, I know. It was shock <laughs> shocking information. Um, this year we have the best new designer award. And my nominee for this is, of course, the ever wonderful and they're only recently discovered um, Stefan Feld. Brand new designer. Brand new designer. <laughs> Never heard of him before. No. <laughs> Stefan Feld um, is one that's really kind of wandered into our life by accident. We've had Castles of Burgundy for like a year or so. We really liked it. It's his most famous game. And then I accidentally picked up something else belonging to his. It was Oracle Adelphi. And we liked Trajan. it a lot. And then we got to Trajan, didn't okay. we? Trajan, then Did we get uh, Trajan first? I'm yeah. not sure. Either way, Stefan Feld has been putting out some pretty unique and spectacular games. And despite how many he's put out, they all feel a little bit different. Now, yeah, they're all a lot of point salad and things like that, that that's oh, true I do like a point for just moving the piece we do but we we do like that style I have to say he hasn't really like let us down yet um, and as I, as I was start, as I stated at the start of this video we have three more of his games unplayed yet that we picked up too that we're really looking forward yeah. to trying um, so he's definitely like our hot new designer of the year definitely my nominee as well as Stefan, Stefan Feld yeah hadn't hot. heard of him before the year uh, uh, he could have been designed by anybody I kind of knew who he was uh, right we yeah. did he was there with like Rainer Knizia and you know those other Germans who made games yeah. <laughs> but yeah Stefan Fels really been a, a page turner that's what I yeah. want to call him a page turner it's like we got one and we're like what will he do with the next one I'm really yeah. impressed we only, we only really had one misstep 
We didn't really like Carpe Diem. Yeah. But other than that, they've been going down really solid. So, yeah. who's going to be the winner for Best New Designer of the Year? Oh, I better win this category. Ooh, yeah. and the winner is? Well, okay, we're giving it Stefan Feld. Yeah, yeah, you should definitely check out some of his games if you haven't already. Obviously, you have to like a dry Euro and you have to like getting points all of the time and not really have any theme. But we've just committed to it um, now. You can, like... His games are different enough that you will find a game that you like of his. Yeah, they're all they're all quite unique. Like yeah. you think they'd be far more samey than like they if are. If you want but dice not. rolling, you do Castles of Burgundy. If mm -hmm. you want a, a lighter game, you do La Isla. I like La Isla. That's quite cute as well. Yeah. So yeah, definitely, definitely worth checking out the hot new designer of 2019, yeah, Stefan Feld. <laughs> okay, so on to the next category. Yeah. What's the next category? Games that we should introduce people to. Ah, so this section is really for. You, people like us, you've got a lot of board games. You've somebody coming over who hasn't played board games before. And obviously you don't want to scare them away. You want to mm. introduce them nicely to your hobby because board gamers are quite fanatical, aren't we? We're all like, yeah. I love this. You must love this. Allow me to share it with you. Um, and so this is the, the one that goes, so what would you show to anybody to have them, you know, yeah. get My something? My nominee is yeah. Wingspan, the new game from Stonemaier Games. Is it new I, anymore? Tapestry it came it's, out since. It's 2019, so it it's is still 20, new. Actually, yeah, this, I, I'm just going to point this out very quickly. None of these games necessarily were released in 2019. This is just our year in review of games that yeah. we got to in 2019. So maybe some of them are, maybe some of them aren't, but this isn't all like the new hotness yeah. stuff. Uh, in this case it is. Yeah, Wingspan is the new hotness. Yeah. The old new hotness. Now, if you don't know Wingspan, it's a game about collecting birds. Hey! Now, this could sound like the most boring topic in the world. Really? Yeah. You not like birds? But it, apparently it has a universal appeal. Mm, apparently. The artwork is phenomenal in this game. Mm -hmm. And the gameplay is very simple, very easy to introduce to, to new people. Mm -hmm. And it is a great... I don't like to use the word gateway, but it is a, a gateway into the hobby. I think it can be all right. I think Wingspan's an interesting one because Wingspan is straightforward enough for anybody who's played any sort of game before to understand how it goes. You know, I, I get cards, I put them down in a row and they, they do things when I do things. Um, I'm not sure how like beginner beginner would be. Like, would you show your parents how to play Wingspan? Definitely my mum, yeah. Your mum might, but not your dad, right? My dad wouldn't play anything. <laughs> but that's how I always judge it. Like, could you teach your parents to play this or someone who's not interested yeah. in it? I do think Wingspan is definitely a great introductory game, but I do think you might need a little bit of experience first. But I could be wrong about that. I think sometimes people surprise you as well. Yeah. How well they follow along with things. Um, so that was your nominee. Mm -hmm. So my nominee is one of my favorite and in fact only trivia games um and it doesn't even know it doesn't even matter if you know anything so this is with some wagers from north star games and i love with some wagers you got this like years yeah. ago now yeah. years ago i don't know what possessed you to pick it up but it was a great idea so with some wagers is a trivia game but the trick is you don't actually need to know the answer so the game will ask you all sorts of random things and it, the answer can only be a number so everybody kind of guesses and um, what they think the number is going to be and then you get to bet on who you think was the closest to the answer without going over so you can imagine the hilarity that ensues here um, and I think it's a really great introductory game because a lot of people have play games at home with their family are very familiar with games like Trivial Pursuit or trivia games in general. You yeah. know, those things are really popular. And this is kind of like a step up from that. Um, but not so far that people wouldn't be comfortable. It is genuinely the game I would show absolutely anybody. I would get your parents yeah, playing with agree. some wages over Christmas. Yeah, you know, you, you, you can, can see play it. up to a very large number as well. Yeah. So. And it's still interesting enough for somebody who's played a lot of games already mm. to still play and enjoy. It's not like a game that's dumbed down or something like that. I think no, because just... you don't have to bet on your own answers. You can bet yeah. on the person who you think who you think it, You think knows. And it, and also there's a lot of great interaction between the players. I'm always a huge fan of Wits and Wagers and it's definitely one I think that new players would really appreciate and enjoy. Yeah. So those are our nominees. Yeah. So uh, winner is? Who's our winner? You can say this time. Wits and Wagers. Yeah, well. Wits and Wagers. I think it deserves it. I love Wingspan, don't get me wrong, but like Wits and Wagers oh, is just the, the universal wages. constant of Wits and Wagers. Yeah. <laughs> the kind of the game that everybody can play, so fantastic. All right, on to the next category, and I'm going to have to look at my phone. Curses. Games are like a delicate play group too. Is it? Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Oh, yes. Games are like, a, okay. So, <clears throat> so what, and so the question, the category is, what game would you like to play with a dedicated play group? Um, yes, I hear all of the masses shouting Gloomhaven, but we kind of we saw a little bit more broadly, yeah. I think, than that. So I'm first this time, right? 
So there's a game I would definitely love to play with a dedicated, a dedicated group. Um, and I thought a lot about this actually because it would just be really, really cool, I think, to have a set group of people do the same thing each time when you play to see how it would all pan out. Um, and for me, this is Scythe from Stonewire Games. Um, Scythe is a game that goes up to seven players, which I think is really cool. You all play as your own faction and you're trying to complete various objectives to win. Um, the interesting thing, of course, is that whoever gets the objective first wins it, um, and then yeah. it's not as not you're not able to do it for everybody else, right? Well, there's six. You have to get six objectives. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. So ah, the, the yeah. so the trick is you know well, figuring out what ones you want to do, um, and I've only ever really played it with two players. You and I play it um, quite we a play bit. Play it up to five. I don't know if we played up to five, but my point is it would be really fun to have a group who would play it every time. I think you would learn so much about strategy and so much more about that game than you do with two players if you had mm -hmm. more people. And I think it'd be really fun, you know, once a week to sit down and just play side. Yeah, I think it'll be fantastic. So there you go. That's my nominee side. What about you? Want you? To redo the Rise of Fenders campaign? I would love to redo the Rise of Fenders campaign. That was so much fun, but it wouldn't be as exciting the second time round. I already know all the secrets. Yeah, but you could know them ahead of time. That's not exciting at all. So what are you doing? Spoilers. What are you picking? Uh, my nominee is the game that you could play forever, which is Terraform Mars. <laughs> For those people who know that some in this game called where you telephone the planet and you go off and you do things but what you really do in this game is you play cards to your tableau <laughs> and once in a while someone says the game is over and you're going oh I, I want to play some more cards and I will play Terraform Mars at a drop of hat it's a game that I always love I actually never really do very well Terraform Mars because I literally That's just not true. It, you look at the records I could look at the records but that would involve me taking out my phone again but yeah, Teleport Mars is a game where you build a tableau of cards mm -hmm. and they all come up together and it's just one of those great gaming experiences. But if you're basically just playing by yourself, why does it matter if you have a dedicated game group? Because they're all... Why don't you just play it solo? Because you can play all the different corporations and see how they interact with each other. They don't. It's Terraforming Mars. You're playing your own game. You just happen to share a board. Yeah, and you can share that experience with other people. Your solo experience. Other people. Exactly. Is this just the case that you just wish you could play Terraforming Mars more and yeah. not necessarily have a dedicated game group? <laughs> <sighs> How short sighted of you. <laughs> we appreciate it because it's Terraforming Mars. It is Terraforming Mars. Uh, if you Mars. don't know, Terraforming Mars is one of my favorite games. So. Yes. We, we've, we've noticed from your worship at the altar yeah. of Terraforming Mars. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Brian, so who was the winner? I think it was Sides. You think it was Side? I think Would you side. rather play with a group of people with Side? I'd probably play Tef on Mars, but Side is very close up there. So, so wait, did Side win? I think Side won. <laughs> Give the answer. Okay, we'll check the answers. <laughs> oh, and the winner is? It is indeed Side, people. Side. Um, I'm not surprised. I think Side would be really... You seem very surprised. No, I just... I assumed your love of terraforming Mars would just win out and I would have had no say because obviously we've decided these before and then we compared notes and decided, you know, who should be the winner. Um, I really would have liked for it to have been a surprise on the day, but we probably would have argued on camera for hours. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but um, I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm surprised that it's Scythe, although I'm glad it is. I think Scythe is the one that deserves the repeated plays to really get into the strategies. That's what I think. Terraforming mm. Mars, you will always know what you're doing because the cards but tell you what to do. repeated plays as well. What? Tefal Mars deserves to be played over yeah, and over. Yeah, but we could we could play it over and over without a dedicated gaming group. This is the very specific phrase. It's nothing to do with playing a game on repeat. That's okay. <laughs> I'll give you this win. Yeah, yeah, you'll give me this win. Okay, so next game on this pile best is best looking game. Yes indeed, best looking game. Alright, so I'll start this one out. Um this is a game that's been mentioned already, unsurprisingly, um, because it was just so hot this year. And this is Wingspan from Stonemeyer Games. And I think there's something very special about how Wingspan looks and feels to really give you kind of a fantastic table presence and an experience. Um, like Wingspan just adds in all, 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 that bit extra because at, at its core it is a game about cards and rolling some dice, really. Yeah. That's all it is. Um, but not only are the cards lovely, you get this amazing player board that, you know... I love the birdhouse. Lots of people can the, play about birdhouse, but I love the Yeah, birdhouse. it's got its own birdhouse. I love the fact that the trays hold your cards and also hold the cards while you're playing. It's a very simple thing, but it really adds to, you know, the experience and how the game looks. Of course, the artwork is a major help. There's some fantastic designs in, in the game. And every card you get is kind of exciting and interesting to look at. 
So Wingspan for me is the best looking game of the year. What about you? Okay, so I went with best looking game. I have to go with Brass Burnham. Yeah. From the cover to the board, this complete, well, it's a sequel to a really boring looking game called Brass. <laughs> Uh, if you ever see the two compared, you could not believe that they are based on the same game. It's just an old man with a hat and the other one, isn't it? A goldie man with a hat yeah, and an old cover of brass. And the board is the old like uh, map of England with the space for chits with okay. no, no graphic design whatsoever. Where the new mm -hmm. one is this phenomenal map of the area around Birmingham. The the cover is it not, it's it's not the old the man, it's the street. It's the yeah, it's the cobblestones. There's two the, types of brass. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it just looks awesome on the table. The only thing that lets it down ever is the small little chits of the factories. You do have to play with chits, I think. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But they are they are nice chits. The thing is, yeah. the artwork in um bra in brass is it Birmingham? Yes, uh, I'm going to uh -huh. say it correctly. Um, it's done by Ian O'Toole, so I'm not surprised that it looks so sleek and beautiful. I particularly appreciate the fact that the board has a daytime and a nighttime side. I think the yeah. nighttime side is particularly evocative and pretty, like in and. and Everything about that game also just feels deluxe, like yeah. doesn't it? It, it feels again, fancy. Kickstarter. <laughs> it, Wingspan wasn't a Kickstarter, so that that should be the, the from point. an ex Kickstarter company. Ah, come on, la! Jamie's been at a Kickstarter for years now, <laughs> but he knows what to do. But yeah. my point, yeah, I don't think everything pretty has to have come off Kickstarter now, has it? No, no, just no. a lot of them. Just a lot of them. That's fair enough. I want to hear in the comments below the pretty games you've got that didn't come from Kickstarter. I want to know because there's got to be a number of them. Stop looking. <laughs> <laughs> We're on camera. Behave like it. Okay. So who's going to be the winner? Um, I guess I get to announce it this time. This uh -huh. is actually pretty, <laughs> pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, it's Wingspan. Wingspan's just yeah, It's Wingspan. a stunning looking game, and it's the only game where the rule book feels amazing, along with oh, everything else. Yeah, yeah it's, there's some, there's something about it. If you saw my review for Wingspan, I got super excited about what the rule book was made of. Um, but it is, yeah, it's just a beautiful game. You can't deny it. I think it deserves this very much. Uh, for the most interesting category, the best named game. Yes, the best named game. Yeah. So this is the game that has like the coolest or most interesting or you yeah. know fascinating Evocative title. Name. Yeah, because it's not something like yeah people talk about board game artwork. You very rarely talk about the game title though, right? Yeah. And that's gonna be a big deal to come up with as a game designer. You know, what do you name your game? Will it draw people in? Does it sound yeah. interesting? You know, does it describe exactly what the game's about? Yeah, so um, what is your nominee? As well, might not, you, might, can, you can go, what's so your nominee? My one is very straightforward, it's called A Pleasant Journey to Nico. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Nico is a port in the South um, Arctic. <laughs> You're like, is it? Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's the Antarctic. Yeah, it's the, the one with the penguins. Yeah, the Antarctic. The place with the penguins, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so why do you like the title so much? Because it describes exactly what the game is. So you are is trying it to. Yeah. <laughs> it's very pleasant when you win. <laughs> That's so it's a game. lovely little tableau builder where you are building a pat from the South Americas to South America. Yeah, it's so from your port in South America all the way to. Yeah. Are you sure it's in South America? Yeah, yeah, I totally so. think he's making this up. By I way. Making this up. We'll talk about this in a little bit. But. <laughs> to the Antarctic. Mm -hmm. I hope I have the right Antarctic. Or you could just say that you're building a shipping route so that you can go and see penguins. Yeah, yeah. that's see basically penguins. what it an is. Ecological sound. Yes, an yeah. ecologically sensitive journey route. So yeah. and the and you think the title is just that good yeah. out of everything that's come out this year? It evokes exactly what it is. It's about the journey. So you just build your pathway across the mm. boards. It is a it is a very unusual title because it sounds like a full sentence. Yeah. A pleasant journey to Nico. But it doesn't have a colon. Usually when they have a full sentence it's like X. The why. The great <laughs> awakening. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. So, okay, I, I, I think yeah, I agree with you. It's an interesting title. It's one you definitely stop and have a look at and go, what's yeah. that about? Uh, so, my nominee is a little bit more straightforward than that. Um, and this is for Vindication from Orange Nebula Games. Um, so, Vindication is a very special game in the sense that its title is very much like a Jason Statham movie where it describes exactly or answers every question you might have about the game by answering with the title. So, you know, what's this game about? 
being vindicated. Um, you know, what, what, what really are you doing? Well, you're trying to vindicate yourself. Vindication. Yeah, it's like the, 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 basically the plot of the game is that you've been kind of thrown out of society for being a bit of an asshat. Kicked off your ship. Yeah, kicked off your ship. And now you've landed in a whole new world and here's your chance to like do things right or change Bring things or to, to vindicate yourself. <laughs> um, I think it's a really interesting title. It's one that you're like, what the hell is that all about? Vindication? It's a, re it's a really odd title. Um, but it really fits everything you do in the game and describes it kind of perfectly yeah, yeah, I think it's, well. yeah it's a beautiful game absolutely gorgeous game um and really fun to play we've got a lot of fun yeah. with it so yeah so vindication that's my nominee okay so who's the winner brian and the winner is a pleasant journey to nico yeah it totally deserves it doesn't yeah. it it is such and a cool time it does yeah and yeah. if you actually know what nico is it makes sense it's also got some very strange fish meeples that i had to ask on the internet what they were it's a type of fish they're very rare antarctic fish I believe. I believe. So, okay, that's awesome. All right. So, next, next category. category. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at my phone. So, this one is. Oh, I like this one. Okay. So, coolest mechanic. Um. So, as obviously as more games come out, we're seeing different types of mechanics and new ways of exploring how to play games. Um. And out of all the games we've seen this year, we we decided we think about you know what was the coolest mechanic we saw. What was yeah. kind of interesting or different. Um, so I'm going to launch right in here with my nominee, which is Foothills um, from Tony Boydell and Lookout Games. And Foothills is a card game. Um, it's a card game of a, another game, essentially, which is Snowdonia, um, which is a, basically a game about removing rubble to clear train tracks, right? That, yeah. That's what it's essentially about. So the card game version does the, the same thing, except what's really unique about it is you have four cards in front of you that are your actions. And once you perform what well, action it says on the card, the card flips over to the other side and it does something slightly different. And so the trick here is planning out your turns about when you flip your card over, how you're going to flip it back and you can even add new cards into your order of cards and I just thought this was such a cool idea for multi-use mm. cards it really got me thinking it was an interesting puzzle but not a particularly difficult one but enough to make it kind of exciting You're like well if I manage to do this then I'll do this and then that will go with that um I think it was really special actually it oh. really stood out for me as the coolest mechanic of the year it is a good mechanic but it cannot beat my one okay. so my one is from a game called Brussels 1893 mm -hmm. I hope I have the year right Oh, check the box. Yeah, 1893. I, the name right. I said Brussels, not Bruges. You've been saying Bruges like for the past week. Yeah. <laughs> we mean Brussels. Brussels. <laughs> Brussels, 1893. Right. Yeah. So in Brussels, it has a couple of really cool mechanics, but the one I will focus on. So there's a five by five grid representing all the actions that the players can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you'll draw a card and it'll tell you a grid point reference and you will put down this right angle and that will close off an area and that's the only area in which players will be able to do actions mm. this round. So going first and having the ability to place that right angle is very important because yes. it really limits what the players can and cannot do this round. Mm -hmm. And since you can, have per you can also build personal buildings in this area, so you can really focus in on getting your buildings involved and not your opponent's buildings involved. Mm -hmm. And it just blew me away to see this very simple mechanic very easy to explain, yeah. but had great strategic depth in the game. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's a very, it's a very unusual one to give somebody kind of the power over the group of actions you're going to be able to perform in a round. Especially like you said, if you've already put your own houses or things like out like that, and you're mm -hmm. forcing other people to have to use them, which mm -hmm. is to your benefit. It's very cool. It also has a very cool little roundel mechanic in it as well. It's Often got, it's got a clock that moves, um, for when you build things to tell you what building materials you need. Yeah. I actually think Brussels. 1893 yep. it is full of all sorts of actually really cool and interesting things and it's not a new game either and very simple more importantly it's very simple to explain usually when you yeah. have a cool mechanic it's usually like oh by the way mm. and you have to do this and this and this and this and this and it's a long teach to teach the mechanic but in this case mm. it's like to me, seconds. to me, I think a really, truly good mechanic should be simple. Yeah. And it should be smart. And you, you know them when you see them, though. You go, like, oh, the first oh, time you great. drafted a in Dominion. The first yeah. Time you played Dominion, and you, you, you're building your. And deck. you feel everything clicking together like that. You yeah. know. Yeah. Exactly. I think you know it when you see it. Um. So the winner for this category is yes. then. Brussels, 1893. 1893. Mm -hmm. It's true. Um. It's pretty. It's a pretty spectacular yeah, it's a, game. It's a amazing mechanic mechanic yeah and it's really fun to play too yeah i think there's so i i love i love that feeling when you go wow that's so smart i'm having so much fun playing with this yeah. i can't wait to use this in whatever way 
that suits me best. You know, I think it, it's so, so smart. Yeah. So that, that, yeah. And that's from Pearl Games. I didn't get to mention Pearl Games. Pearl Games. Pearl Games. All right, so let's mosey on to the next um, category, okay. which I believe is. Um, and we kind of, uh, I don't feel like we kind of, we talked about mechanic, so it feels only fair we should talk about theme. So yeah. what games do you think have the most original theme? What about you, Brian? Jump in. Okay, my original theme for this one mm. is a game called Barrage. <laughs> As if you <laughs> haven't heard of it before. before. <laughs> <laughs> Barrage. Barrage is a game about generating power. Now, there are tons of games about generating power, but this power, game yeah. is about building dams to hold water back and then feeding that water down through your pipelines to your power stations to generate your your own power and your own 50 points in the end. And it just felt very different to any other of those power generating games. And it was just a lovely team. Really? Yeah. Are you sure you just... There's also I... mechs in, in it, if you've read the backstory. Are you sure? Yeah, it's got Tesla or something in there, yeah, does not it? Yeah, it's always Tesla. It's always Tesla, it's, it's true. just like side. It's got, it's got <laughs> mechs who built out the... the... <laughs> uh, but like, so are you choosing this because it's supposed to be an original theme or just because you like Barrage? Because it's sounding like it's just... No, it's like... a very original team of building dams. Of building dams. There I have been even... no other games about building dams or what? or blocking water or... No? Can <laughs> no? you have another game that builds dams? Um, Lowlands is the one where you should build the you dams build to prevent dikes. all the water. It's the same thing. A, low, a dam. A dike is a dam of sorts. Also, I have not played Lowlands. Me neither, but I know it exists. Fields of Ireland is another one where you stop all the water coming into your thing, isn't it? And then you irrigate the water out. To right, get your piece again, you're not. I'm, I'm just saying I, that this theme has been done yeah, before. You, you're saying any game, this game is also not set in the Netherlands where every other. Oh, is. oh, I'm sorry, it has to be specific. <laughs> a specific location. My point is, I've heard of other power games and I've heard of other games with yeah, you know, th that, with, this, with this them theme. Combined but, if the, but if you feel that that's the most original theme you came across in every game we played this year, <laughs> you're lacking in imagination. <laughs> oh, I'm walking right? out of here. <laughs> Those cameras uh, are. You know, you're entitled to your opinion. Yeah. However bad it may be. <laughs> <laughs> oh. well, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So, what do I think then that has the most original theme? Well, we mentioned this already. Um, and this is A Pleasant Journey to Nico from The Wood Games. And as Brian tried to, and well, pretty yeah. much successfully explained earlier, this is a game about traveling to the um, the Antarctic. I yeah. hope it's the Antarctic. <laughs> traveling towards where the penguins live. Yeah. And you have to create shipping lanes. And you want to do it in such a way that it's ecologically sensitive so that you don't kill off the penguins, you know, homeland. You don't, they, you don't yeah. want to get rid of all, you don't want to get rid of where they live. Um, and this is a very crazy theme when you try and say it out loud or explain it. I remember when I heard it first, I was just like, all right, penguins, I'm with you. Yeah. But there's... There's, there's so much more to this game that I also think the theme is really well implemented is the other thing about the game yeah. it does feel like you're kind of you're going on a journey and you're building your journey as you go along um, less to do with penguins more to do with ships but I just I thought it was just such a unique idea yeah well the penguins so, are there in the background so yes they are they are they're there in the background mostly you're just gathering fish yeah <laughs> fish to move your ships um, um, dealing with your pollution that you cause yes making sure you don't have any pollution because that would be bad yeah. yes Captain pollution Planet pollution is bad kids yeah yeah don't pollute <laughs> <laughs> uh, power's inside you <laughs> alright so the winner for this category is, is and you can tell because I snubbed you so badly is a pleasant <laughs> journey to Nico like I like Barrage is pretty cool don't get me wrong it's pretty innovative for a dry euro game yeah but the pleasant journey to Nico is all in a league of its own really when it comes to theme I can't yeah. think of any other game that's kind of like it or it really it. sounds like it should be a, a fantasy game you're like it's, <laughs> you know Bilbo Baggins on a, a, a ship somewhere, so, somewhere yeah. you're like a having a pleasure cruise <laughs> It does a little bit. It does yeah. a little bit. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, so next, what do we got? The game that deserves more mentions. More mention or more recognition. Mission. Yeah. Now, this one's kind of hard to quantify, right? Because how we're judging this, I suppose, is games that we don't hear people talking about on podcasts or maybe seeing on yeah. Instagram or seeing a lot of videos about, you know, games that just don't seem to get talk. And buzz. They, yeah, buzz. That's a good word. Um, and that we don't hear about and we think people should hear about. So this is our opportunity to tell you, yeah. you at home. The viewer. Uh, yes, the viewer, uh, that there are games um, that are here? great. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. <laughs> They're probably having a cup of tea by now. Yeah. Just left us on in the background somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. We should, I feel like I should shout now to get their attention. Shouting, hey, you, come back. <laughs> We're still talking. No. <laughs> okay. 
So, what's your nominee for this one then? My nominee is a small little game called Tokyo Metro. Mm -hmm. Now, we got this on a kind of whim based on its mechanics. Yeah, yeah based on its mechanics. mechanics. I, pick, I actually picked this one for you because yeah, Brian loves stock trading games. I like stock trading mm -hmm. games, I like root building. Yeah. So, we got this out and I was like, oh, this is interesting. It comes with a clock mat and it's mm -hmm. like it's this um, layout of the subway system in Tokyo. Now, I didn't say the Tokyo Metro because that's the actual name of the game. Yeah, but it is what it is, yeah. isn't it? And it's this really cool game. It's like you, you don't own, you own the train companies and the trains run automatically on the system, but you can, there's cards that allow you to speed them up and slow them down. And then you can either own shares in companies or you can own, sh you can own the stations and you have to balance between the two. And it's just a phenomenal game when it comes to, to money generation. And mm. anyone who likes games like Acquire, yeah. any of the, probably the 18xx series. You would think like, so? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a... We've it, never played an 18xx game. How would we know? I follow 18xx games. Brian tried to bring an 18xx game to us once and we threw it back at his face. Because we were like, <laughs> we're not going into debt in the first turn. What kind of crap is this? Yeah. Things not to do in this house. Bring debt into the into your... <laughs> Nobody, yeah. We, we basically I, just threw the game back at him. You yeah. had to get rid of it. I think there was two games that day you threw back at me. That and Race for the Galaxy. Galaxy. Well, that had too many symbols. That was a yeah. different... That was, that was that, a different time in, a, in another age yeah. it is time long ago so your your pick then is definitely is Tokyo Metro, Tokyo Metro. deserves it's, more recognition, deserves more recognition. Mm. okay um I totally agree with you Tokyo Metro is a, a really great game and I think it's also easy enough that a lot of people really enjoy it I think it's yeah. there's some it's got the thing what I'm calling the thing when it comes to money games where we got so excited you when you're trained you on his little bike trying to get between stations <laughs> or there's a phase where you run your train and you get your money and we were just chanting train 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 ah, give us the cash yeah. um, it was it was pretty great yeah. so my pick for um, a game that most people don't know about and I had a lot of choice for this because I played a lot of games from Taiwan this year um, and from Asia kind of in general and they're, they've been really interesting very different and very fun um, but there's one I'm going to call out and this is Dado Cheng and this is from So So Games and this is a really clever little game isn't it? Yeah. You were really surprised by this so this is a game about basically you're moving your resources along a track and there's a number yeah. of tracks and you choose which ones to move along how you get your resources to move however is basically like a game of connect four except your pieces flip over when you score them and then can flip more pieces so yeah. you have to imagine it's like you're planning out this loop into this loop into this loop to get all the stuff um it's very very smart it's very smart and very original the, mm. the, you get two moves to organize your pieces and then you just let your engine go and you hope you got as many connect fours as possible yes you, you do one you flip them over, flip them over. It, Gets another one, you flip yeah. those over. If you're very good, you get a third one, and if you're very lucky, you might get a fourth one. <laughs> yeah, I think we met, I think I posted a video of us flipping over a whole bunch of them once the first time we played it because yeah, it yeah. was just so amazing to watch it kind of yeah. chain. Never into seen other anything things. like it. Yeah, it was really, really fun, and hence why I think this is a game that deserves um, far more recognition than it's gotten. So you should totally check out Dado yeah. Chang from So So Games. Okay, and our winner is. It's you. It's Tokyo yeah, Metro. It's Tokyo Metro. <laughs> You're like, uh. yeah, to Tokyo <laughs> Metro. The, uh, I audience. have to agree. I think so many people would love Tokyo Metro if they tried it. I yeah. can just. It, it's got that. It's got that it factor. And it works on all player counts. Mm -hmm. And That's it's very point. and it's very straightforward as well, but really really fun. It's the kind of game you never feel out of either. You yeah. always feel like there's loads of things to do. You never really get stuck. Mm. I just I really. Plus, yeah. you can just watch the trains move around. Yeah, exactly, and it's pretty. It's really really pretty. Yeah. It's a shame about the size of the box, but other than that, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> the box is very small. It so wouldn't it's be a problem shelf. if they had the name on every side of the box. Yes, well that too. Yeah. Okay, so that so those are good games that definitely deserve more mm -hmm. recognition. Mission. Mission. Okay. All right, so what's next on our pile of things to do? Okay, the We're almost one. there. Oh, I like this one a lot, yeah? Games you fell in love with. Yeah, games you fell in love with. This is really easy for me. Yeah. Like, unbelievably easy for me because yeah. this happened many moons ago on uh, the Kickstarter Eve and there was something really, really shiny happening that I knew I couldn't afford. 
Um, so this is Aliens, the board game. I mean, Nemesis. <laughs> don't, don't sue us. <laughs> don't sue us. This is Nemesis. So um, Nemesis is basically, if you've seen the Aliens franchise, any of the movies, um, it's kind of, it's basically set in the same world. You wake up on a ship. You don't really know what's happened. And as you move around the there's ship, you body. discover, yes, there's a dead body. You discover um, other things are a little, perhaps lurking in the ship. And you've got your own mission that you're trying to do. Um, yeah. You're going to try and get it done. Um, but, you know, hilarity ensues when aliens crawl out of the ducks and whatnot and get you everywhere. And the, re the reason this game was difficult was because I fell in love with the idea of the game, but we don't normally like miniature games. I think that's straight up. We have, we've never bought anything we also with a lot like, of miniatures. This is the point where we don't like semi co op. Yeah, semi co op has never gone down well in our house. No. And it just. While this game called to me, it didn't feel like it was sensible or reasonable to ever pick it up for us. It was too expensive. It wasn't in our wheelhouse of things. But the more I saw people play it, the more I fell in love. I saw uh, reviews and pictures and I just, there's something about it wouldn't go away. And we saw it in Essen as well. I got very, I almost went for it in Essen, but I thought it was, it was still too expensive even in Essen. Yeah. Um, and you wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go up and so coming up to Christmas we managed to you know sell some of our own board games and I was like this is it I'm gonna get Nemesis and you know what the best part was I was right I was so <laughs> right it was it was brilliant right out of the gate that that game is yeah. something special and I'm totally obsessed and in love with it no I, so I agree like, I, 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 I don't it is, think it's semi co -op. I think no. it's competitive with an element of which yeah you know I might do things to your advantage, but yeah. still, I'm trying mm -hmm. to get my yeah. stuff done. It yeah. reminds me of a game called Battlestar Galactica, Battle okay. yeah. where you used to have a traitor element. We used to love that. Yeah, we used to play that a lot when we had a lot of people, but I was worried that it was just two of us. But the thing here is, is basically my love story with Nemesis is that I fell in love with it a really long time ago. And you know when you love something a lot and you really, really want it and it shows up, um, it normally doesn't live up to your own hype because you kind of went a bit nuts. This totally exceeds my hype. So this is definitely the game I fell in love with this year and hopefully I won't fall out of love with anytime soon. So, so Nemesis. So what, where, where are your lovely feelings? Well, my love goes back to now our, our favourite new designer, Ooh. Stefan Feld. Yeah. It's a game called Trajan. Yes. Mm. And it has this great, I think it's called, is it Roundel? It's a Mancala, isn't it? It's a Mancala. Roundel, Mancala. I think it's a Roundel. It's six spaces you have you start off with two pegs in each space with, it's in a circle by the way yeah. in case we didn't say that it's in a circle it's very it's important so it's in a circle when you take one take an action you have to move enough pegs from one space so that they finish up on that space and then that will change the number of pegs in these spaces which will change how many actions yeah. you can do and if you're getting confused, that's okay because this is what this does to your 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 <laughs> yeah. brain. You and have, to, you have a, to see it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a visual puzzle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a, it's, a it's a visual. And there's puzzle. some stuff happening on the board, but mainly it's this circle, and it's just mm. great. It's just yeah. like you do this, you can do this, and then you do this, and it's just phenomenal. <laughs> it is it is like the most interesting dry euro game um yeah. there's something so cool about the way you move those pieces and how you plot out your turn like there's nothing you don't know about what's going to happen next yeah everything is knowable so you can plan ahead accordingly yeah. planning ahead is a really hard bit and what also is really hard is that how long it takes to play the game varies depending on what kind of actions you do yeah. so the further you move your pieces the quicker the clock runs out which is horrible horrifying especially <laughs> when your pawn is doing this nothing you're doing a seven piece move again a seven piece move that could be an action for every player at this yeah, table yeah I know uh, <laughs> that's because I don't can't plan well <laughs> I move one thing one thing one thing all the things yeah. So, but yeah so I uh, trashing is a pretty I good love thing. you love trashing yeah more than terraforming Mars no oh so you didn't really fall in love. Okay, maybe you did fall in love. Just a little you can bit. have multiple loves when it comes to board games. Board games are not jealous. Really? Yeah. I don't know, Brian. I think they'd be looking down at me with like condemnation, <laughs> going, How dare you? How dare you have not played me in six months? <laughs> if anyone's doing that, it's a Robo Rally. Poor Robo Rally is staring down from the ceilings, yeah. going, I used to be the favourite. <laughs> yeah, I used to. Still is a favourite. No, it still is a favourite, yes. But yeah. as you pointed out, apparently we can have lots of board game loves. I'm not yeah. like that. But. <laughs> <laughs> one love for me that's it so who's the winner of this category then we all know who the winner is I'd it's nemesis. nemesis yeah and to be fair you loved it too yeah you were surprised i i, I, lo I love what i write mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it doesn't happen often 
enough. Uh, but since I'm usually the one who picks the board games, if I had been wrong, it was a terrible investment to have been wrong with. I would have easily just sold it on. It's so, Maybe. such a hotness. Yeah, it's, well, it's fantastic. And more importantly, after we bought it, the price just went straight through the roof and yeah, it was totally unattainable. I caught you while it was cheap. I told you. Some well, days I have my cheap. moments. Yes, cheap. Not really cheap. All right, so we're coming up to the last, last yeah, the yeah. last section of our entire debacle. So in the honourable name of this channel and everything I do yeah. as a board game inquisition, inquisition and a high inquisitor around here, apparently, um, this is the award for no one expects. No one expects. The board game inquisition. No, no, they don't. I'm apparently. waiting for John Cleese to walk through the door. Oh, that would be cool if the, the inquisition, I need an inquisition hat. I yeah. would love to get me a hat that's your or next a year. smoking jacket. That's what I'm thinking for next year. Because yeah. normally I'm by the fireside, but we don't have we don't actually have the fireside so. on today. We did paint the room. Did you notice how nice and green it is now? <laughs> that was what we did for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the no one expects category. Do you want to start this one off? Yeah. So we got to, uh, we were at Essen. And actually, this goes way back. <laughs> right, like, back in kids. 1972, <laughs> five years before my birth. <laughs> <laughs> well worked out, but well. Um, so, last year on Kickstarter, there was a game by Design We Love called Simon Luciani. Yeah, Simon Luciani. It's a movie. You know, this is my pick. That's my pick. <laughs> oh, I picked Barrage. Because you already picked Barrage for a different one. Oh, okay. Yours is Zombicide. Oh, yeah, because it says Zombicide Barrage down here, but it's actually because. <laughs> yeah. We don't. Okay. It says Barrage Zombicide. So, take two. Uh, I'll cut some of this in because it was still kind of good. <laughs> okay. Apparently, my, my pick, well, actually. Yeah. It's okay, I'll, yeah. I'll edit some of it out. Yeah. Okay, so around about a month ago, game, a game started get really, really cheap that was never cheap. And we was looked it at it and went, cheap? No, I've never seen it this cheap. It was a piece cheap. of hair. So it was everywhere, it was dirt cheap. Well, dirt cheap for... for cheaper. Cheaper. cheaper Half the price. Half the price, that's so what So we yeah. looked at it and we went, it's a game with miniatures in it. We don't tend to like games with no, miniatures in it. No, we don't. But Nemesis was right. So maybe all these other miniature games could be right. And my parents going, Brian, you have to get a, you have to get a present for yourself for Christmas. It's like, okay. <gasps> oh, so I was going, to me. me. My parents are buying me a gift for Christmas. <laughs> a gift I want. I know. What is this? <laughs> so I decided, finally, after years of looking at it, to get a copy of Zombicide. In this <gasps> case, Zombicide Green Hordes. Now, I've always liked orcs. I, he is fact, part orc, after all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you swallowed enough of that orc paint by now. <laughs> yeah. To have paint. Green tune. Green chins. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we said we we get it and then I, I we got it. Um I didn't even send it to my parents to get wrapped. I just put it on the shelf in its in its wrapper. I resisted the, for the entire month of December opening it. And then on he Christmas Day, yeah. we opened it just um, to, in memory of all those Christmas days of opening stuff like Space Crusade, where you got the little miniatures, you got the sprues, and you cut them out. He was five years old again. More like eight or nine. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have to paint anything or assemble anything mm -hmm. out of sprues. It was a real positive it moment. It comes with a trebuchet. So it comes with a trebuchet. And as everyone knows, a trebuchet is awesome. Even though she did refer to it as catapult a couple of times. So hey, I, I didn't see it sideways. <laughs> okay. I was like, can you, you know, I see that it doesn't have the basket thing. Can you throw a rock 300 yards? Can you guess where the rock lands? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a trebuchet. So you were super excited? So I was super excited. We're going to have a trebuchet. We're going to have some adventurers. We're going to roll some dice. Then we're going to put it back up on the shelf and never so, see it again. Until yeah. we, they take the miniatures down to rubber. And we played it. And it actually was really fun to play. Mm, that's true. I expected much more crappy dice rolling and us complaining yeah. that, you know, we had no um, power over what we were attempting to do. And it wasn't too easy either. I thought, well, we only did, we've only done the introductory scenario, but I yeah. expected it to be a little bit more kind of walk in the park. We normally hammer anything that's cooperative yeah. between no, us. I was stupid. You were stupid. Brian got himself killed. It was really funny. <laughs> I was like, I was like, are you sure you want to go in there? I was like, yeah, yeah, totally fine. I, th I think what makes this game a little different is the fact that the enemies automatically hurt you if you are next yeah. if they can hit you they're gonna if they can reach you they will hit you and i think that adds a lot actually to the game it yeah. makes it definitely a, that bit more dangerous and if anybody yeah. dies the scenario ends well in this scenario in that, that particular scenario which i also thought was super smart yeah. so it meant you had to play in a particular way that wasn't just i'm gonna run in and roll my dice and hope for the best exactly yeah so this is a good picture yeah. obviously so that was your surprise of the yeah. year zombicide green hordes green horde i want to say green plague but yeah, it's i guess like cool on zombicide like cool on green hordes yeah so yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so my surprise of the year shouldn't have been a surprise, but it 
it backed itself into a corner. Um, Big corner. <laughs> and this is um, Barrage from Cranio Creations. So Barrage is a game we looked at on Kickstarter. We looked at it. Yeah, we, we, we like the designer. Um, I quite like Simone Luciani. And everything about this game looked really, really good. But we, we for whatever reason, we didn't pull the trigger. I think it was just slightly out of our price we range. We backed some other stuff at Kickstarter over it. Over it, yeah. So we never we never picked it up, right? So yeah. then the campaign continued. We're like, maybe we'll get it when it comes to retail. So then the campaign continued, and then there was a lot of not nice things said about the quality of the game for the Kickstarter release. People it were very delayed. upset. Yeah, but it's just more... Uh, even the game, Kickstarter games are often delayed. Kickstarter yeah. games that normally come with components that don't work. Um, so yeah, people were upset and annoyed or whatever. And we saw it at Essen, yeah. and we were like, do we want to get a copy? And we thought about it. We got very close a few times. We yeah. walked by the stand, but we just... We weren't completely convinced. We yeah, and yeah. We t- it, we'd heard a bit about the components, components being bad. Yeah, so we we left Barrage out of our sites, and then coming up to Christmas, um, while looking at or the, I think it might have been the Black Friday sales and it, stuff. It's when we had the spurge where we yes. sold more games than we thought we were going to sell. Sell, um, and we spotted it for pre-order in the UK for like a very reasonable price. I was I didn't think that was a real price. I thought that price was a mistake. Yeah. Turns out it was okay, and it shipped within a week of ordering yeah, it. It shipped, and came then we for that. So this is why Barrage such a surprise because to everyone else everyone was like oh yeah Barrage is pretty great but the minute we opened the copy of Barrage um, oh, I felt like it had come from like a third world country um, I, don't, I don't know how else to describe it but it's just everything in it is cheap everything in it is not pleasant and if I had paid full price for that or got it on Kickstarter I would have been livid with disappointment yeah. um, like the main board itself is like the back of a cornflakes packet it's so thin and I was just in general not it, sealed either right no now, it's so. not so, yeah everything about it just felt like crap and I went oh man we've just wasted all this money and we were like well we'll see what the gameplay is like and we were kind of hoping it would be bad so we could just get rid of it and sell it <laughs> on and this is why Barrage is such a surprise because it's a damn fine game it's a really really good game despite all of its flaws um, Barrage is really fun to play it's very clever it took me a little while to figure it out together I can't wait to play some and more have, games yeah, and we have to, mm-hmm. it has a lovely mechanic of the you wheel. never lose resources but yeah. they, they go away from, uh, for mm-hmm. a while from you you can speed up to get back to you yeah so I have to say Barrage really impressed me because it, it just it gave itself all of these negatives where I didn't think it could redeem itself and then out of nowhere it, it was a cracker of a game yeah, it's so awesome that game. that is why no one expected Barrage yeah. no one not no even one. us <laughs> not even us yeah. not even us okay so who will win the no one category who will the well I think we both know the answer to this isn't it yeah. it has to be Barrage yeah, yeah. the winner no one expects no one expects dot 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 Barrage <laughs> Um, and yet the rest of the world seemed to be really into it already you know no the rest of the world was into complaining about it maybe maybe but I just for us anyway I think it was just it, it was a real standout compared to the, how it set itself up yeah. for failure I was pretty sure after we opened the box I was going to go close that box close that box and it will push it yeah. next time we go to sell some games we can sell yeah, that along with exactly. it exactly so, um, so that's why Barrage is the winner yeah. so this brings out um, all of our kind of top picks for the year um, it's been a great year hasn't yeah. it yeah, for, for our board year. games I don't think it's been a great year for new board games for 2019 we actually we were looking through a collection but new to us weekend. games it's been, yes it's been great for new to us games for sure yeah. um, and it's been really exciting you know being able to talk to you all about them share them with you and you and I play yeah. them together and I bring our findings you know to you and I hope you've enjoyed kind of doing this with us I want to hear your answers I'm not joking I say this every time but I mean it I really want to hear what some of your favourite things were um, from the year and what you're looking forward to for next year yeah. have you made any new year's resolutions yet what do you want to do next year less <laughs> more games less rule books there was a time where I read so many rule books <laughs> that's the, the problem with, with new games and things yeah. like that um, and next year we should have a category best rule book uh, yeah we had one last year you know we, we, yeah, we did last year because last year were a completely different series of questions yeah. but um, yeah so that's basically what's been going on here I hope you're enjoying you know your end of your season I wish you a happy and healthy 2020 where I'll continue to re- review more games yeah I know unsurprisingly I still I still have a stack to get through um, so until next time everybody um, take care and thank you for watching yeah. bye 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 no one expects me no one expects you too true <laughs>